Right. Good evening. I'm going to talk to you about ion channels. So that means we're going to answer this question. What are ion channels? Um, okay, I'll forgive you if you haven't asked the question before yourselves. Um, but ion channels are actually a lot closer to all of our lives than many of us realize, and there wouldn't be much life without them. So let's dive right in. So it sounds a little bit esoteric or technical maybe, so let's try and break apart the question. For a start, what are ions? So here are some ions that you're probably familiar with already, right? This is ordinary table salt. It's made up of ions of sodium and chloride. Um, I'm sure you've heard that name before. So ions are just uh, atoms that have a, an electric charge. So these guys are, po are positively charged, and the chloride ions are negatively charged. Stack enough of them together, you end up with a crystal of salt. Now we know what happens if you drop some salt into water. It will dissolve, right? Um, this just means that the water molecules get in between the, the ions, then breaks them apart, and now you have your sodium and chloride ions floating about in solution. And this is a, a common situation, actually. So you often find ions floating about in water. For example, in the ocean, we know that's salty water. There's heaps of ions floating about there. Um, in your food as well, think about soup, for example. That's got a lot of salt in it. That's ions floating about. And also uh, in our bodies, our blood and other body fluids also contain a lot of ions. And this is what's going to be important for us right now. So that's ions. Um, so what are channels? You probably already have an idea about this one, so I'll just show you a picture of a channel that I like. This is a canal in Venice. Um, so what is it? It's essentially just a pathway that a boat can move through because it can't move through the buildings. Um, I hope you know this already. <laughs> so what are ion channels? Ion channels are just pathways for ions to move down, right? So obviously these are not ions, these are not ion channels, these are ions, but this is not an ion channel. So where are all the ion channels? Well, it's true to say they are actually in Venice. You do find them there, and you find ion channels in Munich as well. And right now in this room, there are trillions of ion channels. So if you want to find out where they are, you just have to look around at your neighbors, because ion channels are in all of us. Um, or more specifically, they're in the cells that make up our bodies. Now. It's not just us, of course. All living things are made up of cells, and all of those cells contain ion channels. So all of these guys, plus more, whatever you can think of that's alive. So that includes birds and bats, all kinds of plants, um, and even down to single-celled organisms like this amoeba here, or even bacteria. Um, they're all alive, they all have ion channels. So let's have a closer look at cells and see where, um, and see where the ion channels are and what they're doing. So we'll take ourselves as an example, because we're all narcissists, I assume. And um, so we see here a diagram of, uh, of a human, where you can see some organs. So there's a brain up there, and there's a heart, and you can see a circulatory system, some arteries and veins. All of our organs are made up of cells. If we just have a look at one of them, we would see that a cell is basically just a bag of salty water with a few other things inside that I won't go into. Um, and what keeps all that salty water and other stuff contained is the cell membrane around the outside. The main job of the cell membrane is to stop things from getting out and to stop other things from getting in. It keeps the inside separate from the outside. But sometimes the cell does want to move things across the membrane. It wants to move stuff in or out. Some of those things are ions. The problem for the cell, ions can't get through the cell membrane. They'll bounce right off. So to solve the problem, uh, the cell manufactures small tubes made out of protein and inserts them across the membrane. So now it will have, um, so the tube traverses the membrane and now the, there's a hole. And this is our ion channel. So now the, now the, membrane, the cell membrane has all these little, these little pores or holes in them and now in it, and now ions can pass through. Uh, the other issue for the cell is that it wants to control. It wants to, keep, wants, to, wants to keep control. So it wants to control when ions move in and out. And so this means that ion channels are, in general, closed. And they'll only open under specific circumstances, uh, when the cell wants them to. So to have a, look at, uh, a closer look at how this process works, we'll have a look at one of our 
basic physiological functions that we're all familiar with, which is movement, that is moving our muscles. This is just a, a, a diagram of some of the muscles around the shoulder and arm. And like all our organs, muscles are made up of cells, the muscle cells. They tend to be long and thin. Uh, you might guess that they have a membrane and there are some ion channels in that membrane. Very important for, for muscles is, uh, are these protein filaments that are capable of grabbing onto each other and pulling each other together. And this pulls the ends of the muscle cell together, so the muscle cell contracts. And so when enough of your cells contract together, your muscle contracts and you can move. An essential part of this process is that calcium is bound to these protein filaments, specifically um, calcium in the form of ions. So if you wonder how the ion can get inside, the, inside the cell, now we know, right? They can get in through ion channels. So let's have, um, so let's see exactly how this process works. So say you want to move for some reason. You have an itchy nose. You want to scratch your nose. So you have the thought, I'm going to scratch my nose. You send the thought down your, the signal down your neurons. And um, one of your neurons will project a process all the way to the muscle that you want to move. And it will terminate, will, will end very close to the, the to, to the muscle cell. When the signal that you want to send gets down to, to, to scratch your nose, gets down to the end of the of the the neuron, it releases a message, a messenger, a chemical messenger called a neurotransmitter. This is the signal for the muscle cell to contract. So there's no point in sending a signal if that signal can't be received. And so for the muscle cell, the way to receive the signal is through ion channels. So these green ion channels um, here have a, a special um, a spot on them that neurotransmitters can bind to. And it's kind of like uh, a key in a keyhole. So these neurotransmitters attached to the ion channel, unlocks the ion channel, it opens, and now ions can move through. So you see, it's, but you can see probably that this is not our calcium ion, that's the one we want to get inside. That's because these ion channels are just the, the guys that receive the signal and tell the muscle to activate. What they do is they initiate an electrical signal that is passed to the, um, these other ion channels, the calcium channels, which allow the calcium ions to get inside. The calcium ions can bind to the protein filaments, the muscle contracts, you can scratch your nose. So that's how ions, uh, ion channels of different types being opened at specific times allow us to do simple things like scratching our nose. And we know that as long as we don't do anything too ambitious, this process uh, usually works out pretty well um, most of the time. Uh, but there are substances out there that can interfere with the function of our ion channels. Um, and disrupt our physiological processes, like moving our muscles. So these substances tend to be things that we call uh, drugs or toxins. So toxins, for example, are just, are just natural poisons, th things that you find in nature that disrupt your physiology in some way, usually harming you. Um, and so some toxins work by binding to your ion channels and interfering with, uh, uh, interfering with how they work. Some, for example, can stick to the same spot on the ion channel as the neurotransmitter usually sticks. Um, the problem for, for you is that, and for your ion channels, is that the toxin doesn't work so much like a key um, as like sticking some chewing gum into a lock. So it doesn't open the ion channel, but now neither can the neurotransmitter. You can't get the key into the lock that's full of chewing gum. So this means that no matter how much of a signal is being sent by the neuron to the muscle, it will, um, the muscle will never re receive the signal. It won't realize that it's being told to contract. Uh, now toxins can work in different ways as well. So now, yeah, so now this, is, this, this site is blocked. Um, another way that toxins can work is simply by plugging the pore through which ions can move. So even if the channel is open, see we've got a neurotransmitter attached, the channel's open, but there's no way for the ions to, to move through. So again, even though um, the signal's being sent, and in this case, the channel is open, the muscle never realizes that it's getting a signal because of this toxin. So now let's have a look at a, a real life 
examples of one of these one of these toxins and and how it works. So this is a plant that uh, you find you can find in rainforests in South America, and it contains a toxin that specifically affects these ion channels that I've talked about already, which receive the signal from your neurons. And they work like these um, chewing gum in the lock type toxins, and it blocks the site where a neurotransmitter usually binds, and so your muscle can't contract. This toxin has been used um, traditionally by, by native people in South America when they were hunting. Um, so they use this, so it's common to use this kind of a, a weapon, so it's a blowgun. And so it involves putting a, a dart inside the, the, a tube and then blowing that dart towards a prey animal that the hunter wants to eat. And they, um, to, to ensure success, it was typical to dip the tip of the, of the dart in the poison that's extracted from, these, from this plant. And so then when the dart hits the animal, the toxin goes into its blood and into its muscle. It blocks up these ion channels and now even though the muscle is trying, even though the, the animal is trying to tell its muscles to move, it doesn't work. It's paralyzed. It will fall to the ground, and the, um, the hunter can go and collect it. So, when Europeans came to South America, they uh, of course uh, they eventually learned about this these sorts of toxins from the native people, and eventually some of it made its way back to Europe, and there, and also in the U.S., doctors sort of began to think that maybe this could be useful in medicine. Because maybe if you didn't give enough to actually kill a person, you could just give enough to relax the muscles. Um, and there are some situations in medicine where it's really useful to, um, to have this kind of uh, substance to relax the muscles of a patient. For example, in surgery. So uh, it's, it's a lot easier to, put, to perform a surgery if the patient's muscles are completely relaxed. And so doctors try to apply this this particular toxin in conjunction with anesthetics and uh, and it does work but it turned out it was a bit too unpredictable to use uh, routinely and so after some time although it was the basis for the development of synthetic drugs that work with exactly the same principle or similar principles to the toxin but are more um, more easily controlled so these are just two examples of situations where ion channels can be interfered with to, um, to, to affect our physiology. But there are thousands of other substances out there, toxins and drugs, that can interfere with our ion channels. And these substances are so effective at interfering with our physiology because our ion channels are so important for so many of our functions. So I've talked about muscle tonight um, and how important ion channels are there, but all of our bodily organs are made up of cells, and all those cells have ion channels um, that underlie how they work. So including your brain, your liver, your heart, your lungs, pretty much all of it. Uh, and in every case, if you didn't have ion channels there, that organ is not able to function properly. So that is basically how close to your lives ion channels really are. Um, and so, yeah, so even though uh, you can get by without thinking about them most of the time, it's, it's fair enough. Um, now you know at least that even when you're not thinking about them, they are, they're still working away in opening and closing just at specific times when your body wants them to, to underlie all these essential functions that, that keep us alive. Thanks. Now we have some time for questions, please. Please. Also, so if I got you right, uh, you mentioned that there are two types, at least two types of these ion channels. Uh, this for sodium and for calcium. Yes. Yep. So the question is <laughs> <laughs> if there is a, a two, two types of ion channels or only two types. Um, no, there are many types. There are dozens, possibly. More than 100 days. <laughs> oh, so it's, uh, it's not over yet. <laughs> okay. How do they differ uh, uh, one from each other? Uh, are they, uh, do they have a different diameter or are they somehow uh, charge locked? I mean, like uh, plus, uh, plus one goes uh, there, plus two goes there. 
and so forth. Have you finished with the question? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there is another question. <laughs> uh, let's stick to one, I think. Let's stick to one. It's, so it's, it's over, yes? That's perfect. So the, the, you, you can, by the way, approach the speakers after the event and talk about it if you want. So the question is, if there are different types of ion channels, how they control what exactly they're passing through? For example, by their charge, maybe they control it? Yep, sure. So yeah, there are different ion channels. They're let through different types of ions. Some are very specific. Um, or in this case, for calcium, as we saw, or for other ions. And yeah, it depends on the, the pore size, on, on the, yeah, the, size, the size of the hole through the, through the middle of the channel. Um, and other things like the particular amino acids that are inside and how they interact with the ions as they come through. Um, so there's different ways, there's a couple of different ways, but simple size is one way that, that selectivity is controlled. Yeah. So some other questions, please. So now that we know that there are like different ion channels, I wanted to know if there are differences in ion channels from the human body cells or from like, let's say bacteria body cells so that you could like develop a drug which is just specifically target, targeting bacteria. So the question is, are there mechanisms of ion channels different in bacteria and maybe humans, for example? And if you can specifically target the ion channels which are in the bacteria? Yep, sure. Um, there, are, yeah, there, are, there are big differences between species. Um, uh, the function of ion channels in bacteria is not really clear at this stage. Um, but I'll tell you a, a good example, which is the comparison between a type of ion channel um, but um, that's essentially the same, but it's diverged through evolution between mammals and birds. And, uh, and this ion channel is the stuff that detects the, the capsaicin in chilies, so that's why chilies are hot. And the mammalian ion channel is sensitive to this stuff, but the bird version is not. So it means that birds can eat chilies, fly away, and like poop out the seeds somewhere far away, but Mammals that usually crush up the seeds, try and eat it, and go, Ugh, and then and don't they don't eat the chili anymore. So yeah, can vary even just between birds and mammals. It's very convenient. <laughs> <laughs> Some other questions? <laughs> Please. Um, are there any like modern drugs that do block the channels, like uh, sugar coffee stuff like that? And what can I do to uh, keep them? Uh, what you can do to do what? Sorry. What you can do to keep the channels clean, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, so they're, they're really tiny cellular components. Um, so if something goes wrong with an ion channel, the cell will just take it out and trash it and break it down into its constituents, make a new one and put a new one in. Um, so for you, that just means eating your vegetables and being healthy. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's not really like, there's, there's not, and avoiding, or just avoiding drugs and toxins that, that are going to block up your iron, that are actually going to cause trouble for your iron channels. But in general, you don't need to worry about them getting dirty or wearing out or that sort of thing. It's just, um, they just, there's part of your cells that will be recycled over time. We will come to the topic of public health in the next, yeah. <laughs> next talk. So thank you, Alex. So. Sure. <laughs>